morning, everyone. My name's Dan. I'm with the uh, Keylines team at Cambridge Intelligence. Um, I look after product management. And uh, we, we decided to talk about space and time. It, it kind of sounded fun. And uh, uh, we're from Cambridge, so we got Stephen Hawking. And I'm a physicist by background. So it seemed like a good talk, but it's, it's not really the point, I think. Um, what I really want to talk about is, is insight. Uh, we heard it this morning in the keynote. Um, it's something I'm hearing a lot, so I'm completely new to the, uh, to the world of graph. Really, I've been here a few months. Before that, I had a kind of engineering physics background. I actually worked with some of the material scientists on that Orion program that uh, you heard about this morning. Uh, but I'm hearing this word a lot, that uh, data without insight is nothing. Insight is important. So we're going to talk about visualization uh, in space and time. There's a graph. Uh, you could get that data from a, a Cypher query out of NEO, and on its own, well, we get a bit of insight. It's a densely connected network. We might learn a few things, but um, uh, space and time can help us understand more. Um, so let, let's just take a quick step back, talk about graph visualization. What do I mean by that? Um, I've got, a, uh, got an example of this here, I think, if I can make this work. And um, here we go. So here's, a, here's an example of a graph a query. Nodes are people, links are emails. Um, visualization means displaying this in a useful way to people. So for example, I could say, let's, let's make those links a little bit thicker to show the volume of email that's being sent. Uh, or maybe let's, let's use a centrality measure. Uh, I could look at betweenness and size and color these nodes so I can see who are the gatekeepers of information or who are the important influential people in my network. So visualization is all about taking data out of these uh, graph queries and, and getting useful insight from it. But the problem here is that th these were emails, you might recognize it, these are emails from the wake of the Enron scandal and people were trying to figure out, well, what actually happened. Um, and you need to understand time. I mean, how do we know who emailed who first? Did, did this chaos over here on the right happen? Was that triggered by something happened over on the left? What was the cause? What was the effect? Um, Neo, of course, is really good as are uh, other databases uh, for storing any kind of information you want. It's a very open schema, so we can score, store a timestamp on these links, uh, no problem. Um, but how do we visualize it? How do we get that insight um, out of it? Uh, I've got an example here um, of, let's make this a bit bigger. Uh, here's one example of how you, you visualize time. You can just show lots of snapshots. This is, uh, this is not key lines on Neo, but it's uh, uh, a nice data set off, off the web. It shows, um, uh, the House of uh, Representatives congressmen in the US and how they voted over time and how they collaborated and it, it kind of shows a nice evolution. You can see at the top of the picture a lot of collaboration. More recently, hardly any, a lot of partisanship. That's a useful insight. Um, so that's one way to do it. It still doesn't show everything though. It doesn't show how any one particular person changed their allegiances over time, for example. That's, that's missing from it. Um, so what can you do? I've, I've got another example here of Combining a graph view up there with something down on the bottom there, we call it a time bar, um, and uh, interacting between the two. So for example, again here, nodes of people, links of phone calls in this case. Uh, we could kind of zoom in, we could look at, a lot of the activity happens in September, so I could kind of zoom into September and say, okay, how does that affect my query? Let's just look at the communication then. Uh, maybe zoom in a little more to a particular set of dates or, um, have a look at those. I can even animate this so I can start the thing playing. And this is great to watch. You can watch this all day and see cliques forming and, and groups changing. Uh, it's supposed to be a lightning talk, so I'm going to have to not watch this all day. But, but it's cool. And um, as well as the, the animation, we could do other things. We can say, well, you know, what about a particular person? Let's pick uh, somebody over here and say, you know, how, do they, how does their pattern vary with everything else? I can see now. I'm extracting information from the graph and, and overlaying it on another picture and saying, well, this guy was not very busy at the beginning, became much more active later on, and so on. So there's all that insight in the data, in the database, timestamps, um, uh, dynamic information. Uh, but uh, getting insight from it requires doing some clever things with the visualization. That's one example. I also wanted to talk about uh, space and uh, spatial information. We had a talk earlier about journey connections. That's a great example. Um, we all learn when we learn graph theory that space shouldn't matter. Topology is topology. And these two graphs are exactly the same thing. 
Um, uh, but unfortunately, there's also a lot of insight to be had from space and where things are actually physically located in the real world. Um, here's a network. Uh, this is a network. Pretty obvious example. This is uh, flights and uh, flights between airports in the US. And we can learn information from this just by looking at that. We can see that Atlanta there in the middle, the orange one, that's a hub. It's a hub for one airline in particular. The color coding is, is showing me airlines, so I can spot that's Delta's hub. I can see American Airlines' hub in blue at uh, Dallas over on the right. So I can still learn information, but of course, um, the obvious thing to do would be to stick this on a map. Um, again, the beauty of NEO is that you can store um, your uh, latitude, longitude, you can store any information you want uh, as a property on these nodes. So time often lives on the link. Um, uh, location often lives on the node, not always, but quite often. So very simple matter in my visualization tool in key lines here, I can switch over to the map mode, reorganize that, show it in context, and now I can start to get more insights. I can start to see where, the, uh, where those hubs are, why they're where they are perhaps, um, where we have a very large geographical area served by a small number of airports compared to a uh, very dense geographical area served by uh, a lot of airports. Um, very, very easy to spot. It's what people expect. And of course, insight. Insight is all about people and not everybody using a graph database is a graph scientist or a data scientist. Um, you might have business analysts, you might have uh, police officers. We see all sorts of people using these kind of tools and uh, they need to be able to translate it into a world they're familiar with. Um, so finally, I, I just wanted to, um, to kind of put it all together. Um, space and time together and come back to this picture which I had up at the beginning. Um, uh, I've got a time bar down there at the bottom. I'm also going to put this on a map. Let's uh, switch it over to, uh, to put this data on a map. Um, so we now start to see, okay, this is, this is Boston. Turns out this is, uh, this is the data, uh, something called the Boston Hubway data set. Again, it's an open available data set you can take a look at. Uh, it shows cycle journeys. If you're from London, you'll know the Boris bikes here. It's the Boston equivalent of the Boris bikes. You can take a bike, <laughs> cycle where you want. This is showing the journeys over time. It's still pretty dense. There's, there's a lot of these geographic networks tend to be very dense like this, and so you can't spot anything. So let's try combining time and uh, position to get some insight. Uh, something I can do is just zoom in here, and uh, maybe that's a little far, but let's uh, zoom out. The uh, projector is a little little laggy. Pick one of these uh, places here, let's, let's pick this one and just look at the journeys from that and look at my time bar now and I can kind of zoom in here. I can start to see patterns um, in this time, in this data and how it changes over time. Um, and uh, if we look at some of these nodes, you start to see patterns down here. If you can see this, the, the red journeys are the ones that end at this location. The green journeys are the ones that begin at that location. Um, we use color to separate them, that really helps. And you can see, for example, that in this particular station, a lot of journeys end there in the morning and begin there in the evening. So you might be able to <coughs> spot from that that uh, this is probably a uh, place of work. People tend to commute on average. They go there in the morning, they leave in the afternoon. Uh, and if I were to pick another uh, station, maybe a bit further out, out of town, I see exactly the opposite pattern down there. I see journeys beginning in the morning and ending in the evening. So, um, you know, that's really... It's a lightning talk, I've got to show things very quickly. Um, hopefully that gives you a few ideas of how you can kind of combine time information, space information, and get a whole lot more out of the graph that you, you wouldn't necessarily get just by storing latitude, longitude, timestamps in, uh, in the information. So uh, j just to wrap up, um, talk a little bit about what, uh, what I was using there to do those demos and uh, what this is all about. Um, uh, those demos were all uh, just little web browser examples I put together, but uh, or we put together at uh, Keylines. Um, Keylines is a component basically for building visualizations um, in JavaScript, so you can put those into your web application. If you're developing applications, uh, you can use it. It works fully with Neo. Um, it's designed to be just very easy to get these kind of visualizations put together and bridge that gap between the power of the data and the data science that's going on in your organization uh, and actual end users, analysts, people who might not even know they're analysts, uh, who are just trying to extract information from, from graphs and, uh, um, and gain insight, which is really what it's about. 
Um, okay, that's all I wanted to show, but uh, happy to take questions if I didn't use up all the time trying to get my projector working at the start. Yeah. It's a commercial product, yeah, um, uh, and it works works with Neo. We we've got a stand downstairs, so you can come in, or upstairs, so you can come and uh, talk to us and find more. But yeah, you can license it, put it in your own applications.